say to you at Christmas, a very special edition filled with festive fibs. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian whose previous jobs include playing the organ at a crematorium. He's the man who puts the fun into funeral. It's Bill Bailey. <laughs> An award-winning comedian, actress, and the writer and star of Gavin and Stacey. Or, as I prefer to call it, Gavin and Stacey and Bryn. It's Ruth Jones! <laughs> and on Lee Maxine tonight, uh, a comedy legend who's won a BAFTA, several comedy awards, written five books, and written and starred in a hit sitcom. But to me, she'll always be the judge from Splash. It's Splash Judge Joe Brand! <laughs> and the fastest dame in the world. Not much of a claim when the competition consists of Maggie Smith, Judy Dench and Christopher Biggins. It's Olympic gold medalist Dame Kelly Holmes. And so we begin, as always, with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've got no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And, Joe, you're first up tonight. Last year, I ate my Christmas dinner in the bath. <laughs> David's team. Why? <laughs> because we had quite a lot of family round and I just wanted to be on my own because I was in a really bad... <laughs> no, and was it on a plate? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the... that's a horrible image, isn't it? <laughs> it was on a plate. Hold on. So I'm just going to picture the scene, right? You've got your Christmas dinner on the plate and you just get up to the table and you say, I'm just going off to the bath for a bit. And the I, don't, I don't think I announced it. Oh, you didn't? I was just so fed up with everyone. I just got up, took my dinner, went upstairs and thought, I'm going to have a bath. But didn't you find it that you got really hot eating in the bath? I could eat my Christmas dinner in a fire. <laughs> Where did you put the dinner when you were running the bath? Mm. On the toilet. On the toilet. <laughs> did you did you allow the bath? The, not, the... not with. I mean, with a lid on it, and a, yeah. a nice little table. But, no. Even you so, I think it's a bit. <laughs> Do you? It's, it's just the it's oh. the associations, isn't it, of the two it ends of the process? Else's <laughs> toilet. It's like well. saying to the food, "This yeah, is where you're going to end up, mate." <laughs> Know it. You In know it, I know it. You're going on an incredible journey. <laughs> yeah. Did you continue to eat your Christmas dinner while the bath was running, or did you pause in that process to sort of save it until you were nice and comfy in the bath? I had a cup of sprouts, David. <laughs> right. did, did you have, like, a tray that goes over the side of the bath yeah. Yeah. you can put the dinner on, or did you have to balance it on your knees? I had to balance it. On so your knees? Yeah, not on... necessarily. <laughs> If you're balancing it on a part of you, is there not a risk that it will become submerged at some point, which would ruin the dinner? Essentially, you're turning your Christmas dinner into the Maldives in about 30 years' time. <laughs> when, you know, the, the bath water of the world starts to wash the sprouts towards the plug hole. Well, I don't, I don't put enough um, water in the bath for that. In okay. fact, you know, I don't hardly need to put any water in the bath. <laughs> OK. What do you think, David? What, do you, what are your...? What do your what? team think? I think maybe you had a bath, but you didn't eat your Christmas dinner there. Yeah, I can believe that Joe has had baths <laughs> and, has eaten, <laughs> and has eaten Christmas dinners. I don't believe she's ever combined the two processes. I, well, I think, I think she might have done. Oh, you think she might yeah, have I done? Do, yeah. All oh, right. I thought we were heading towards consensus no. there, but <laughs> in a very Christmassy way, we're very much at loggerheads. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Seeing as I feel a little bit 50-50... Yeah. Oh, no, that doesn't help at all, does it? Well, no, it does. Because <laughs> if you're 100% it's true and you're only 50%, it's... Oh, who said I was 100%? I'm about 80. All right. <laughs> I'm going to need a pen. <laughs> this is why I keep saying I need a spreadsheet. <laughs> OK, we're going to say true. So, oh, they're saying true. Joe, eating your Christmas dinner in the bath, truth or lie? It's... A lie. No. <laughs> 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 
Yes, it's a lie. Joe didn't eat her Christmas dinner in the bar. Bill, it's uh, your turn. Oh, right. OK. Uh, it says on my card, possession. Ah, just to the side there, there's a... Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> just, just, bring... just bring that up there. Pop that up there. And then okay. read the statement before you do anything else. OK. This is Jacob. <laughs> I don't remember those yoghurt drinks making that noise. <laughs> OK. Must be live yoghurt. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jacob. I once smuggled her into the cinema, then had to pretend the noises she was making were coming from me. <laughs> OK, now perhaps you could, you could unveil, take the, 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 the yes. sheet off. Oh. Oh, I love cats. <laughs> Right, um, please, uh, team. Why on earth would you take Jacob into... Jacob. Hang on. Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, yes. Jacob. It's spelled... <laughs> into it's spelled a cinema. Jacob, but pronounced Jacob. OK. <laughs> I was on tour, yeah. and the bird uh, was on tour with me mm -hmm. in the hotel room, and um, we wanted to go to the cinema, so... Uh, my wife hang on, whoa, whoa, stop me there. Why was the bird on tour with you? Yeah, good well, question. Well, because um, we, we didn't have anyone to look after him. We, she's on we, tour. Um, That's a bird with a man's name, then, is it? Oh, sorry, is it a she or a he, the bird? It's a she. But right. why is we've it called Jacob? Be... <laughs> Jacob. Yeah, I know, but Jacob. 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 Well, no, there was a little bit of a... There was a bit of confusion with the um, sex sexing, sexing yeah. I first. had that with a rabbit once. Did you? Yeah. What, sex? <laughs> <laughs> See, well, in the cinema, Sit. we Sit. put. <laughs> in the cinema, we uh, put a, a coat over over the case, right. and we were watching a film. And then, in the middle of the film, there was some music, and she got quite into the music, so she started whistling to the music. What Maybe was the film? Entrapment. <laughs> That's a bit insensitive to a bird in a cage. Yeah, no. <laughs> I did, we didn't think of that at the time. Is that the normal cage that he lives in? He or she lives in at home? No, or does no. She this is a one? travel cage. Ah. Uh, it's called a Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the bird starts singing along with the music of the film. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then, then what happens? And then, then she started to make noises, and then people started to look round, and they looked round and they heard this noise, and then. I actually just went, I went... <laughs> and made a kind of... <laughs> and then... And then she said, uh, you could like that. And then I had to say that to my wife, I went, you could like that. <laughs> and just sort of pass it off, like we were having a little conversation. Was anyone sitting next to you, other there than your a, wife? There was a lot of people in the cinema, what yes. Did they, what did they do? What did they uh, say, they like, just think? thought we were a bit weird. So how, how long have you heard Yakov? Yeah. Yeah. Yakov? Yakov? Must be about uh, 10, 15 years now. And do you have a lot of these animals? We do, yes. How many animals do you We've have? We've got about, I don't know, 30 or 40 animals. 40 30 animals? 30 or 40 yes. animals? Really? Yeah. What like? Fish, uh, I some... don't mean in your that's freezer, that's I mean... Nice. Ants, we've got loads of ants. <laughs> <laughs> We've got dogs, cat, I mean, uh, you've birds. You've got a cat? You've got a cat. With the, with the bird, isn't that a problem? No, the cat doesn't stay in the house. Um, What's he doing? Go around the cinema? It goes <laughs> around the <laughs> yeah, The cat's got a paper round. Uh, <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? What um, does your team think? I, well, the, I mean, the obvious big clue to this is that he, he seems very close... She seems very close to Bill. <laughs> Oh. Oh my God. I've seen oh, Bill do lovely. TV shows where yeah. he's working with wildlife, so I know he uh, likes right. the wildlife. There you go. So it might be so that he's possible. lying, but he knows how to handle that bird. That's what I think. Would you be so bold as to give him a kiss enough. on the lips? I could do. I want talking to you. Come here, then. Give a kiss. Give a kiss, kiss. You're right. If it's shy, oh. she's a bit shy. I don't want to stir it up, but she was all over David in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe. I, think, it's a lie. I lie. don't think he'd be go that lie. irresponsible. I'm going to go lie. OK, my team say lies. You're all lie. saying it's a lie. OK, Bill, okay. was that the truth or was it a lie? It was true. <laughs> yes, it's true. 
Bill did smuggle his parrot into the cinema. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Mick. <laughs> so, Kelly, what is Mick to you? Well, this is Mick. And I have a photo of him in my car to stop me getting road rage. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Joe, how do you know Mick? Uh, this is Mick, and when we were bell ringing together in church, he was responsible for me being hoisted 20 foot up in the air. <laughs> and Lee, what's your relationship with Mick? This is Mick. His surname is Partridge. And I once had to rescue him when he was stuck up a pear tree. <laughs> So, there we have it. David, where do you want to start? Uh, <laughs> OK. Can you do me a favour? Can you start with these two? Cos I might need a while. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, uh, wh why have you got a photo of Mick to avoid road rage? How does that help? Mick's known me for a long, long time. So he used to have to calm me down quite a lot on the track, yeah. and then he used to come and watch some of the races, cos, obviously, when you're a young kid, you get your family members and friends and things to come. And so, because Mick used to always make me smile when I was stressed, uh, he gave me this one photo. And what is he doing in the photo? <laughs> Smiling. <laughs> is <laughs> he wearing anything, or...? <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, it's just a headshot. Do you ever get he... road rage, Ruth? <laughs> is that something that affects you? I, I do get annoyed, but I, I don't show any anger or rage. I tend to just smile or blow a kiss or, or wave at them in an annoying fashion. In an ironic... <laughs> ironic. An ironic man. David, yeah, I, uh, I would imagine you're an absolute brute at the wheel. <laughs> um, I uh, am not legally allowed to drive a car. Oh. oh. Does so... that mean you drive a car illegally? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I haven't... Uh, what's the expression? Passed Got... your test? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Test. <laughs> but have you ever had lessons? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In oh. Ineffective, in terms of... <laughs> ..engendering in my brain the knowledge of how to drive. How many or lessons did you have? Up to 45,000. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Who would you like to quiz next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Joe, um, bell ringing. Yeah. Are you a keen <laughs> bell ringer? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a keen bell ringer? I was never really that keen on it, if I'm honest. Have you I, ever yes, been bell ringing? I have been bell ringing. <laughs> where, where, where was it and why did you it give it a go? It was in the church, David. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the church called? Uh, I can't remember, actually. Saint somethings. <laughs> <laughs> no, that narrowed it down. Yeah. Yeah. Can you remember where it was? Yeah, it was in a village in Kent. OK, that's <laughs> well, plausible. That is... If she'd said North Korea, we got a question. <laughs> What was the scene? Well, picture the scene for us. Well, uh, what happened was I had been to church a few times. I didn't like it. So when was this? What, what age were you? About twelve. Right. And and so I was. I, I could either have gone in the church choir, or been a bell ringer. And what <laughs> happened? What did Mick do that led to well, this? Well, it was a sort of prank that used to be played on new ringers and what happened was that Mick said to me can you hold this a minute and I just put my hand out without <laughs> looking <laughs> held onto the rope and just went like that <laughs> right like 20, like 20 up in the air. feet up in the air yes I did right. how old was Mick then um a couple of years older than me so you were about 12 he was sort of 14 oh so he was he was a he was a young lad doing it I was imagining him at the age he is now <laughs> <laughs> It's before the, the service. You're doing the yeah. pre-service bell ringing. Yeah. Why aren't you on your own bell rope? What are you doing there that you're able to respond to his call, you know, grab hold of this? Which well, is a dangerous thing to respond to without looking in <laughs> all sorts of circumstances. It's not quite as dangerous as your impression of bell ringing, which yeah. looks more like cow milking. You're going like this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm no sort of mime. Um, but <laughs> what, what is it more like that? <laughs> is that more like it? Happy Christmas! <laughs> you have to get it from one position to another position, and while you're doing that, that's when it's dangerous. And so how do you do that? Is that using the rope, sort of, you yank it along with the rope? You have or? to pull the rope in a particular way. 
Oh, well, Can you demonstrate? A nice chance yeah. to demonstrate how you pull it. <laughs> well, when you're actually ringing a bell properly, you start put, by putting your hand up and getting the end of the bell rope, which is yeah. about that far above mm. your head. You pull that down and you catch the fluffy bit, and then you pull that down with both hands. Then you let it go, let go one hand and let it go right up, so it's like that. So that's ringing. That's ringing a bell. Mm. In order to get the bell in the right position, you you, you pull it like this. And right. as you pull it, <laughs> that's why he married me. <laughs> now, what about what about Lee and, and his uh, play? Yeah, no, that's not true. <laughs> okay, what was he doing up the pear tree, Lee? He was uh, rescuing a cat. <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where was the pear tree? Uh, next to the cat. <laughs> the pear tree was uh, in the grounds of a pub. OK, and it was, this was, like, in the beer garden? We were having drinks outside in the beer garden. Yeah. Uh, we had a bit too many. We went back inside. Uh, it got dark, got late, uh, and then we were staying in a local hotel. Everyone was going out to get the taxis home, and that's when I heard uh, a scream. Help! Oh, the pear tree! <laughs> and, uh, I thought... What? I thought... I remember saying, hark! <laughs> Did, did you know Mick? Was he one of your friends who'd no, gone to Mick, the pub? No, Mick, it turns out, I never met him before in my life, Mick, it turns out, was the landlord of the pub. Right. Right. And which answers the question why we weren't getting served, but we'll forget, <laughs> that, forget that for a minute. Yeah. How big a tree was it, Lee, and how high was, was Mick? The, the pear tree was, uh, was, was quite high, I would say, uh, going, using Mick as a measurement of one, I would say it was about five Micks. <laughs> How did you actually rescue him? So, I, I shouted up, what are you doing up there, mate? And he said, um, yeah, well, this is what I heard at the time. Hey, mate. Came up to him. I said, you don't have to shout, mate, you're five mix up. He's <laughs> 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 right at the top. It's a well, five mix tree and he's right at the top. Yeah, but I was thinking it'd be about three and a half mix. Yeah. Well, to be but, fair, though, yeah. it was sort of lying on the branch, so his head was only four mix and a bit high. Right. Yeah. And he said, well, go and get help. So I said, well, have you got any ladders? He said, yes. And I said, right, well, good luck. And off I went. <laughs> I said, um, how had he got up there? How did he manage to get up there in the first place? How did he manage? Well, he clambered up. So the cat was, it turns out, was at the top of the tree. Tree, right at the top, I'm talking five and a half mix because there was a thin branch. <laughs> on the so he's basically a pear tree is full of uh, pears. That's the word. <laughs> and, uh, for a very brief period of the year. Yeah. Yes. yes. Is Correct. he up there? At the... Well, would you believe that this cat was partial to a pear? <laughs> so wouldn't have happened any other time. He says he's always, he's always like partial. this. His country bloke. Always like this is. But he, he wouldn't go for a near pair. Not well, one of the many that were on the floor. Not yeah. one of the David, fallen. David, David, it was the last pair. He'd eaten the others. So it wasn't full of pears. There was only one right. pair it was full at of the top, no. like an angel. He was full of pears when he started climbing. He was, he'd been up there for two and a half seasons. <laughs> so off I went and uh, got the ladder, clambered up the first bit of the ladder, and I just sort of helped Mick down onto the ladder, and we became lovers. So I know you all right, well, we need an answer, so, David's team, is Mick Kelly's calming companion, Joe's bell-ringing buddy, or Lee's partridge in a pear tree? I think it's Joe that's telling the truth. Do you know why? Because of a rope action. You think it's um, Joe? Yeah, and I don't know what it would take to calm you down, Dame Kelly. <laughs> I don't think Mick is the answer, though. Oh. <laughs> he looks calm now. You want to see him on the top of a pear tree gripping a cat? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, David? I think it's Joe, that's what I think. You think, you think yeah. the bell ringing? Ruth I'm, thinks I'm possibly. Bell ringing. Uh, Bill? Yeah, I'll go with the bell the ringing. The bell for Bill. Yeah. OK. <laughs> right. They all think it's Joe. Mick, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Mick, and I was responsible for Joe being hoisted 20 feet <laughs> off of the ground. <laughs> yes, Mick is Joe's bell ringing buddy. Thank you very much, Mick. Thank you. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. And we start with... It's David. Possession. There'll be a little box <laughs> under your desk. Thank you. There There's you a go. card inside, David. Read the card out first, and then this when you've is, done uh, that... This is just a little something me and Rob got you for <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, once you've read it out, then pop the object on the desk. OK. 
These are two of the best gifts I was given last Christmas. OK, oh, and take them out and pop okay. them on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Yeah. Right, what, um, uh, Lee. Well, well, first question is what... I, I can see what one of them is, but what's the other one? It's a hat. No. <laughs> What's the what's the stick thing? Yeah, uh, it's a uh, it's a, a wand. You know, okay, like, you do magic with it. Who well, got well, you don't wave it around. Anything it? could happen here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who fantastic. bought you it? Yes. Uh, my wife. Oh. That bit is true in case you yeah. don't. He has, he has <laughs> got a wife. Yeah. Right. That, of course, people don't believe it at this point, but it is. He has got a wife. Just to give us a, a fuller picture, let's see if the hat fits. Ah, and yeah, if it yeah. does, wear yeah, it on and then okay. get the full, let's get the full yeah. effect. Ah, but does the wand fit? And then hold I the wand. So. Well, oh. that... <laughs> I... It's worth it. Cool, When you open the present, yeah. did you say, this is lovely, but what, what is it for? It's, uh, no, she said it was um, a wand thing where you can... There's a, it's got a battery in it. Um, oh, it's a cordless it's, one, it, and, it, and you can make it, you can make it be a remote control. Am I allowed to touch David's wand? <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can inspect it if you want yeah. to, but can don't I... damage it. I'll, I'll, I'll get. Do you want to get it? As it's you don't trust me to get it without damaging it. I'm just happier when you sat down. Okay. That's all. <laughs> get me the wand, please. The are, you, the wand. are you born in a little northern town called Double Entendre? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> in Cockermouth. I don't know. <laughs> First thing is, I can't see any way you can get batteries in this thing. And it, it's got a light on the end, so obviously it does do something electronic. But I don't know where you would put a battery. You don't put a battery in the end of there, do you? Can you get no. a battery in the end of there? No. Oh, hello. Yeah. Look, the, the end comes off, so we can definitely... It's an electronic item, definitely. That is a definite. And that's definitely a hat. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> right, I broke it. Are you really? Well, something's come off the end. <laughs> David, I'll get you another one, I promise. <laughs> He actually has lost The end's it. fallen off the... There, there, it is. there it is, there it is. Give me there the hat. Is. Oh, I've sat on the hat! Would you wear that in the house, the hat, David? Would you wear it around what? the house? No, I, I wouldn't wear a hat indoors. Basically, you'd wear a hat like this when you've, you know, on the way from the cab to the scene of the murder. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Lee? What is your team thinking oh. on this? Well, I'm interested that Rob warns <laughs> off manhandling mm -hmm. and hurting it. Would David be that bothered? I have got history on this show. History of breaking well, he owned, things. Well, he owned a pen in one episode when it was his pen. And you broke it? Damn right. <laughs> And there was another episode where he was a, supposedly a beloved teddy bear. I, yes. so I didn't own, <laughs> yeah, but, but I he still... didn't know, and he tore its head off. <laughs> um, so, now, David, <clears throat> I, I would like to know, uh, was there any explanation from your wife at all? Because, mm. obviously, you've picked this up, you but haven't known what this an, is. An though. explanation? Yes, to is why... when you... you're given a present, <laughs> do, you offer, uh, do you ask for an explanation? No, no, you it's, Let it's me quite finish. aggressive. Yeah, Let me finish, David. Was there any explanation at all as to why she married you? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's never explained that, but I don't want to ask too many questions. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I want to a good thing. <laughs> My husband bought me a dress that was two sizes too small once because he wanted me to lose weight so I could wear it. <laughs> he did. And then when he gave it to me, he said, look forward to seeing you in it. <laughs> so for his birthday, I bought him a coffin. <laughs> so what are you going to say then, Lee's team? Is he telling so, the truth? Kelly, you're the saying... Lie. You're saying lie? Go oh, I'll say lie as OK, well, yeah. I have to go with my team and say it's a lie. So the team is saying lie. David, truth or lie? It is true. <laughs> Next. It's Lee. Last Christmas Eve, my wife asked me to pop out and get four to five lemons and eight or nine limes. Unfortunately, I misheard her and came back with 45 lemons <laughs> and 89 limes. <laughs> David. I, um... <laughs> 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 
in better news, we haven't suffered from scurvy for a long time. <laughs> You went out and you came back with 45 lemons and 89 limes. limes. What did you think they were for? <laughs> I don't ever question my wife when it comes to cooking. <laughs> you just don't... With my wife, she cooks some amazingly overly citrus dishes. <laughs> Always. Well, she's well, she doing... using up what you've bought. <laughs> but when you say it was Christmas Eve, yes. were you going to be entertaining guests? Well, you know, family members, yes, so I wouldn't say guests, but they had to come round. What, right. what, were the, what were the lemons and limes for? Well, it turns out they were for the drinks. I, I did wonder why I, I didn't need to get any I pastry. I haven't met your wife. I'm sure that she's very lovely and sensible. Why well, say four to five? Why not just say, go and get me five lemons? Go and get me nine limes? That is exactly what I said when she said, what are you come back with 45 <laughs> lemons for and 89 limes? Because you're right. You tell me, you know. Yeah. Why, does, why does she strike me about the head when I wake up? <laughs> who, who knows the mysteries of a relationship? <gasps> did Where did you get these citrus fruits from, Lee? Was it a corner shop, a, a, a hypermarket? Or it was a, actually, it was a hypermarket on the corner, so it's <gasps> both. <laughs> so you get back home, yeah. and there's Mrs Mack. Yes. And what... I mean, when you put your wares on the table, yes. how <laughs> does she react? <laughs> she said, she said what, what, what are they? I said, what do you think they are? Green ones are limes, yellow ones are lemons. <laughs> she said, how many have you got? I said, I've got 45 <laughs> lemons and 89 limes. She said, sorry, are you saying four to five lemons and eight to nine limes? I said, no, I'm saying four to five lemons and eight to nine limes. And wow. she said, uh, she went, you're an idiot. I said, what? She went, what am I supposed to do with all them? I said, you tell me, you asked me to buy you 45 lemons and 89 limes. She said, no, I did not. I said, four to five lemons and eight to nine limes. I said, sorry, can I just check? What are you saying? <laughs> Four to five lemons and eight to nine limes. So I this said, is when it all became clear. Yes, yeah, she said they're for drinks. I said, I know, but your family are alcoholics, and I thought that <laughs> there was just loads and loads of drinks going to be happening. Mm. She went, no, I was going to make something tarty. I think you'd have laughed about it rather than had a row. Well, these things always happen in our house. I remember saying to my wife, I only wanted four to five kids, and now we run an orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you thinking, David? What do you think? I just don't <clears> believe that she would say, go and get eight to nine limes. Sorry, can I just check? It's in 89 limes or eight to nine? <laughs> I can see it happening. Yeah. I, I asked my husband once, can you get me 89 Mars bars? And he only got me eight. <laughs> 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 what are you thinking, David? Well, we say lie. You can say lie. OK, Lee, was it truth or was it a lie? It's a lie. <laughs> a lie? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so a lie. Lee didn't buy 45 lemons and 89 limes. Oh, and that noise signals time is up. And I can reveal that David's team have won by four points to one. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week this week is Joe Brand. Yeah. Yes, Joe Brand. First a BAFTA, now this. That's a downwards trajectory. Good night. <laughs> when we left EastEnders last night, Stacey was going into labour. The latest baby news coming right up. Then a big celebration for Peter Kay, marking 20 years of making us laugh at five past nine. And after that, meet David Williams and friend, the friend being Joanna Lumley. It's a match made in heaven.